What's up guys, welcome to a sunset episode. Well, I haven't been up for sunset in a minute. Well, I have been up for sunset every day, but sunrise. See what happens when you don't have your tea or your breakfast yet? Sunrise, it is like 6.30 in the morning. And today we finally had what looks like potentially good clouds for sunrise. In the last few days, we've had all that smoke. It's still really hazy. We've had all that smoke from California and it's really been uh, just wiping out any chance of sunrises and sunsets. We haven't had a sunset, but that's monsoons. Monsoons come in the afternoon and it's morning. Let me get set up real quick. So I came out here for a couple reasons. First reason is I'm still working on my R5 time-lapse video. And to do that, you need to get time-lapses. So kind of slowly piecing that together and I figure a sunrise time-lapse would be pretty nice. But I also wanted to try, we do have a lot of haze on the mountains over there and I wanted to try to see if I could get any decent uh, sun rise, <laughs> sunrise photos with my S20 Ultra while this is time-lapsing. Of course I came out a little too late still should have been out here at least 20 minutes ago. I hear a faint of pepola right there. Faint of pepolas are awesome. I'm gonna throw a leaf filter on here because it's about to get bright. I don't think we're gonna get much color in terms of there's these little clouds right here, but I'm actually not going for them. What I'm going for is gonna be the light coming across the little town here. I think that should be pretty nice. All right, so of course, I didn't bring my long lens. The faint of pepple is right there. There's a ladder back woodpecker right there. I didn't bring another camera either. I just brought the RP and the R5. I didn't bring anything else, so. Phone it is. <laughs> so what else are we doing here today? Well, I wanted to, I've been trying to make this video for a while and a lot of a lot of things have been messing me up for it, but the biggest thing that's been messing me up is actually the cicadas. And if you guys don't know what cicadas are, consider yourself lucky. But they're basically like locusts on steroids and they are extremely loud and they are all over uh, Southwest New Mexico in the summertime. You just, it's deafening. The sound is absolutely deafening and you cannot, I mean, you can't even stand to sit underneath the cicadas, let alone film a YouTube video. And I've been trying to just not film in my studio as much, even though I love having my new studio. You know, you guys know I love to be outdoors. So the video that I've been trying to make is about this guy right here. So Ziyun sent me this. It's their new uh, Smooth X gimbal, and they wanted to see if I would be interested in testing it out and seeing as how I do a lot of phone stuff. And uh, a lot of times, I I figured this would be really good for like vlogging with phones or um, even doing like some, adding some little motion to your phone time lapses and stuff. That's kind of what I've been doing with it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go once the light gets nice, I'm gonna go downtown or uh, up into the mountains over there and I'm gonna get you guys some nice B-roll. You've probably already seen some of it. And I'm gonna be using this guy. And the thing that I really like about this so far is just how compact it is. I mean, you guys saw it is super compact. So being able to throw this even in my cargo pocket or my backpack, is no problem at all. I usually just leave it in the car in case uh, in case I have to go anywhere and I just don't want to take any of the big boys and I just grab this. The other thing that I really like about this thing is the selfie stick. So it can expand and I don't necessarily care for it as an actual selfie stick because I personally don't do that much. But what I do enjoy is being able to get better angles for like when you're doing low shots or if I need to reach over something and pan around something, I wouldn't just get this in my time-lapse shot. <laughs> uh, 
but I actually, I, I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about the selfie bit, but uh, I actually kind of like it a lot. The other thing that I like a lot is that it's just really quick and really simple to set up. So I really enjoy just how easily I can get it going and I don't, another good, well, there's a big old B right there. Another good thing that I like is that it fits my phone, which is the S20 Ultra with my case on. So that's kind of nice. And the only thing you gotta do to balance it is just get it right. Slide it in there. So once it's largely balanced, this is pretty close for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on. And there it is. The only thing that I don't like, actually, one of the things that I don't like is, so this right here, I don't know if you can see that because it's on eye detect. Um, this right here is too, it goes over my power button basically. To get it balanced, I have to have it covering my power button. And they did think about that, it looks like, because they have the slot, because they have the slot right here. So if you have like buttons or whatever, it kind of slides over and it doesn't press them, which is good. But now I don't really have access to my power button. So luckily I can just double tap. And the nice thing about this is that it works for both, oh shoot, there's the sun, holy cow. Look at that. So this is with the gimbal right here, just in the regular mode. There's the sunrise. I'm gonna pause for a second. So I'm gonna switch this into photo mode and see if I can't get a shot of that. I know I said never to use that super zoom, but 10 times might still be okay. Capture. That's a lot of haze right there. Really, really wish I would have had my 400 for that. Or even my 200, I don't care. But I didn't bring either one of those, of course. So of course I don't have cicadas, but I have dogs barking everywhere. There's so many dogs in this town, it's ridiculous. This is looking good though. Got that light. Got that light slowly coming in. It's too hazy to really get the light on the collagen, that uh, really cool old church that I wanted. Oh, that was the other shot. I wanna wait till the light gets on that church so I can grab a shot with my phone and then I'll show you guys. Back to this guy real quick. So another thing that I enjoy about this is that they do have their own app, uh, which is pretty much the only way that you can do time lapses. But if I do wanna use their app, then here it is. And you see, I've already got it in time lapse. You can select video and it has their options here. It doesn't have much, but I can go ahead and put it in 4K and we'll try. It doesn't have any options for uh, manual mode that I can see, at least not in the Android version. And I think that's a little bit weird, but You can still capture anything there and you can control the white balance if I don't want it in auto. So if I just wanted it in sunny right now, that would make it, woo. <laughs> I'll just leave it in auto. And then it, you can see here how it has the gestures. So if you set this thing up on a tripod and you're filming yourself and you just wave your hand and then you start moving around, it will follow you. So the app is kind of cool too. I guess they have some editing things that you can do and you can basically do a little bit of editing in your phone, which is uh, pretty nice the way that they have kind of an all-in-one package for you to be able to make your videos and your time lapses and, and put them all together in there. I don't really use that that much because, uh, well, I don't use it at all because I use Premiere. But just to have like an all-in-one super easy thing to deal with is pretty nice. They have their own uh, steady shot so you can turn that on and I don't know if that just turns on the one that's already there or how that works, uh, but it does seem to help a little bit. The one thing that I definitely find a bummer about their app is that, like I said before, is it doesn't have the manual controls that I would really want. 
uh, the ability to change the resolution, but that's kind of it. But not having any of the pro mode features for a video, uh, for the video settings is kind of a downside for sure. The only thing that I see is we can select white balance and I can change it to sunny now because it is quite sunny. But typically I'm just gonna leave it in auto and there's really nothing else. Uh, I'm certainly, the flashlight I guess would be for if you're in selfie mode or something or if you just need a light and it's dark out or whatever. I will say though that I think the, I, it seems like I saw either in one of their videos or somebody else's video uh, that it did have some sort of pro mode with the ability to change settings and stuff, but it was on the iPhone. So I'm, so that leads me to believe that maybe the, I, the iOS app is different than the Android app, which is usually the case in smartphones. Um, it's just, it seems to be easier to develop for iPhone stuff but they do have the app for the Android. Like I said, I'm shooting on my S20 Ultra. It's just, it feels like there could be more, definitely for the pro mode. But that's why I like the fact that you can just use this gimbal without their app and go straight into my own video mode. So I pull up my Samsung and I can go into my pro video and this is where I would throw a filter on for sure. But I can go ahead and adjust my shutter speed and get that nice and exposed and get every hey. hello sorry sorry that was random i haven't had anybody walk up on me in a while <laughs> perks of living in a small town is that usually doesn't happen but uh, when it does it's kind of awkward <laughs> so anyways i wish they had some pro mode abilities in their own app which would simplify things but i'm glad that i can at least use the regular apps and it works really well but other than that i'm pretty stoked so sun's getting pretty high it's getting windy light is good downtown i'm gonna go get you guys some more b-roll but first i'm definitely gonna go make breakfast well it's this afternoon right now and uh our daily monsoon has come so it's very nice outside and the big ditch, which is a uh, wonderful feature of Silver City, New Mexico, is quite full. It's our only water source. So I'm gonna go get some B-roll around downtown while it's nice and wet and puddly and see if I can find any water. All right, let's go. Let's uh, wrap this up, shall we? Some final thoughts. Tea, tea is good. So what do I think? I've been using this for a few weeks now and final thoughts are, there are some really great things about it and there's a couple caveats. So some things to remember or take in consideration when you're looking at something like this are, the first thing is that it is only a two axis gimbal. So. Um, the downside of that is you're missing that third axis and the stability compared to some of the other bigger brothers of this thing is might not be uh, quite up to that standard. But the upside to the two axis is that it gives you the super small size, the super quick setup and ease of use and all of that. Balancing on this thing is really quick and very easy. The telescoping feature is really cool. It definitely helps out to give uh, a little bit more perspective, a little bit more reach, you know, that kind of thing. So I've, I found that pretty helpful. One of the downsides for me personally, for sure, is the fact that I think that it plays a lot better with, with uh, iOS, with Apple. So I have been having a really hard time getting it to time-lapse and getting the right motion and stuff. I basically, every time I set it in the horizontal mode and try to get it to time-lapse and I set my in and out points, it sets the in and out points and I move it you know, with a joystick and get it all lined up and it looks great. And then the second I hit go, it either, uh, it goes back to the beginning where it should start, but then it won't pan, it just won't go at all. 
or it'll be really erratic or it'll go halfway and then jerk back. I mean, it does some really erratic things in the time-lapse feature on Android. And that's a big note because I emailed them and I asked them, I told them what was going on and I asked them if they had any suggestions or if I was doing something wrong or if there was a setting I needed to change or something. And basically they wrote me back and said that for the advanced features like that, the time-lapse stuff and whatever other advanced features, uh, they recommend using Apple. So using the iOS version. And that basically tells me that it's more developed. So I don't know, I've never used an Apple product, so I don't have one to compare it to or say this. these features are on here and not on here. All I can tell you is what I have on my Android. I mean, I've got it to work a couple of times in vertical, uh, testing it out, you know, for like behind the scenes, Instagram stories or something, it's, it's worked okay. But other than that, I haven't been able to get the time-lapse feature to work the way that I want it to. And that's a big bummer for me personally, because, you know, I'm a time-lapse photographer and having something this easy to set up and potentially with the motion and all that is great. So for now, I'll just stick to using my capsule 360 if I want to do uh, motion control time lapses on the fly. And then if you'll see here, another good thing about this is that uh, it does, it can handle the weight of, I've got my S20 Ultra and I've got the Moment wide angle on here and I've tested it out with the wide angle, the Moment 58 Tele, which is like the heaviest lens that they make and their anamorphic, which is lighter than both of them. Uh, but it does balance, it does hold it, it doesn't shake uh, or anything noticeably. So if you want to use this with you know your moment lenses or with the moment filters i use these guys with my video a lot when i'm not using the moment lens so that's just my little 37 millimeter moment filter and in lieu of the lens i can just take that off and just put the filter on so if i want to use uh, regular pro mode or regular mode or whatever and i just want the nd filter this works great with that it has no problem with the filter has no problem with the lenses so that's a big bonus too if you're doing semi-serious mobile videography and stuff and you want your filters or you want a nicer lens or something this can handle it and that's definitely a good thing all right that's it i'm gonna wrap it up here if you guys have any questions about anything that i went over or didn't go over concerning the smooth x Definitely leave those in the comments below and you know I'll answer them. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.